It's good. God is good. Well, hey, today I want to spend a few moments today talking about this concept of the closer you get. The closer you get. Jacob, he's the son of Isaac and Rebekah. He's now nearing, fast forward, the end of his life. His health is radically failing. He says, I want to speak to my son, Joseph. Joseph arrives, and as Joseph arrives, the Bible says, Jacob gathered up his strength. In other words, you say, my son is coming. I've got to show myself still strong. Here's what Jacob says to his son, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said, I will make you fruitful and I will multiply your descendants. I will make you a multitude of nations. I will give you this land of Canaan to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. Jacob wants to pass this blessing on to his son. So he says, I don't just want to bless you, but I want you to bring two of your other sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and I want to bless them as though they were my own children. Joseph brings Manasseh and Ephraim to him. And Jacob then says this, bring them closer so I can bless them. I don't want you to miss the depth of this one scripture in the Bible because Joseph brought them so close, but Jacob said, if they want to be blessed, they got to e get even closer. Church, hear this today. If you want the blessings of God, you've got to get closer to God. You've got to inch your way. If you want this kind of blessing, you're going to get that. But the closer you get, the more blessing you get. Come on, church, is that not exciting? The closer you're moving to God, the, clo the more you're pursuing Him, there's an opportunity for you to be blessed. I think there's an old country song. The closer you get, the further I fall. Not the truth. The closer you get, the higher you go. And when you're pursuing God, there are new heights for you to attain. Jacob wanted to bless his children and his grandchildren. His desire was to transfer God's favor from one generation to another generation. But Manasseh and Ephraim had to get close. Bring them closer. Grab this today. Your proximity to God releases the promises of God. Your proximity to God releases the promises of God. If you want to experience the blessings of God, you've got to get closer to the blesser. You've got to get closer to the only one who can shower his abundance, favor, and blessing on your life. I've got a question, church at least. How close do you want to get to Jesus today? How much do you want to pursue him? How deep do you want your relationship with him to go? Because the closer you get, the higher you go. How close do you want to get today, church? I want to be blessed by God. Anybody else? Come on, I want God's blessing. But I cannot get his blessing while I'm disconnected and cut off. I must get close. You can't live sidetracked or off in the distance. Our faith in God is designed to live up close. So here's what I want you to do today. I want you to lean in today to God. I want you to lean in so close to him that you are feeling almost as if you could smell God's breath and it smells fine. <laughs> but I want you to just lean in. I want you to press in today because if you just sit and you're just going to coast through it like you're on an airplane ride, you might miss it. I don't want you on an airplane today. I want you on a jet fighter that is pursuing Jesus at all costs and at high velocity because the closer you get, the higher you go. It's about your proximity to God. See, the closer you get to God, I also find the bigger the blessings become. Why? Do the blessings get bigger? No. Your perspective changes. 
the closer you get to God, you start to realize, I am blessed. I don't need much more because I'm already blessed. How many feel like that? That God has already blessed your life, that he's put more on your life than you probably deserve. But the closer I get to him, my eyes get wider. And I begin to see, wow, God has shined his favor here and his blessing here and his abundance here. God has been good. The closer you get to God, the higher you go, but the higher you also grow. You grow further, faster when you're close to God. Moses, he's leading a bunch of sheep when God tells him, no more sheep. It's time to lead people. He leads God's people toward the promised land. Gideon was just a farmer when God called him to lead Israel to freedom from the Midianites. Esther, she was a slave girl when God called her to rescue her people from being slaughtered. She was called for such a time as this. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was not chosen because of her good looks or her stature in the community. She was a peasant girl who got pregnant without being married but gave birth to the Messiah. Matthew, a tax collector, most people couldn't stand them. They were seen as the worst of the worst because they robbed people blind. Not much has changed. But he became one of the 12 disciples that would follow Jesus and see the miracles. He wrote one of the Gospels. David, a shepherd boy. But God used him to defeat a giant named Goliath. An unlikely hero would eventually become the king of all the land. What did they all have in common? They got close to Jesus. They got close. They were rubbing shoulders with Jesus. You see, the closer you get to God, the more you can do for God. And the more the blessings of God begin to flow. Jacob said, bring them closer. Church, here's my call to you today. I want you to get closer today. Because the closer you get to him, the more you can experience for him and from him. Here's the blessing that Jacob declared over uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. He said this, the people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. In other words, you're going to be so blessed that everyone around you is going to say, I want what they have. I want what they have. Church, does anyone, anybody here want that kind of blessing? That people are looking at you and they're saying, I want what they have. Look at their great marriage. I want what they have. Look at their obedient children. I want what they have. Look at the joy they have in their spirit. I want what they have. Church, hear this today. The closer you get to God, the higher you go and grow for him. It's about having that purpose in life. See, favor gets other people jealous. Oh, come on, church. As you get closer to God, not everyone's going to like it because his favor is going to shine on you. Abundance and blessing. There are going to be people that say, well, they don't deserve that. And you know what? If they say it to you, you know what your response should be? You're right. I don't deserve it. But when Jesus came into my life, he changed the record and he gave me access to God's blessings and all that God has for me. So that's the beauty. Church Unleashed, God wants to bless you more than you can imagine. He does. But that means you and I have to always be moving closer. Moving closer to him. God wants you to have that abundance, that, fla that flavor, that favor, that blessing and plenty. God doesn't want you to live with lack or without. He wants others to recognize that God's hand is on your life. That there is something special and distinctive about you. Move a little closer to him today. Lean in to him. Lean close to him. Press in because I believe God's favor is but a moment away. 
I know there's some of us, we've been waiting a long time. We've been thinking, hoping, and praying. I really believe that some of us are one breath from a breakthrough. Come on, church. One breath from a change. Something cataclysmic could happen in a moment. One moment away from a miracle, you are one second from a stunner. Where everybody else is going to say, I can't believe that happened. I believe God wants to do that in and through your life. I believe he wants to stun the haters. Joshua, he was called to lead God's people after Moses died. Early in his leadership, God gave uh, Joseph several promises. I'm with you. You will lead. You will overcome. You will prosper and succeed in everything you do. Those are some amazing promises. But here's one that was given to Joshua that many do not know or maybe have glanced over this verse, says this, that day the Lord made Joshua a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites. Notice who made Joshua the great leader. It wasn't Joshua's skills, talents, or abilities. Who did it, church? God did it. God made that cha change. One touch of God's favor propelled Joshua from serving a leader to becoming a leader. It changed everything. He went from living in the shadow of the great Moses to casting his own shadow. One touch of God's favor will do things for you in a moment that a lifetime of hard work can never produce. One touch of God's favor. One moment in his presence, one touch of God's favor sends healing to the sickness in your body. One touch of God's spirit gives you the strength you need to overcome any opposition. One touch of God's grace and forgiveness and you receive his unmerited blessing on you. One touch of God's favor and doors will open that you can never ever open for yourself. Church, God wants to unleash his favor on you today. Abundant favor. And that favor will take you further, faster than you could ever imagine in your wildest dreams. His, fa his favor is just but one moment away. And all our obligation is, is just like Manasseh and Ephraim. I've got to get a little closer. We had this expression when I was in Bible college. They would say this statement, and I didn't really know what it meant. I think I... Still might not know what it means, but I, it's coming back into my mind right now. Get under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> Church, sometimes you got to position yourself in the right place where God's presence can just overwhelm you and flood your life. Get under the spout where God's favor, abundance, blessing, miracles, answered prayers, joy, peace, gentleness, all those things he wants to pour out on your life, but you got to position yourself. Remember, your proximity to God releases the promises of God in your life. God's favor is always but a moment away. I also believe this. God's favor on your life is always growing. You never arrive with God. You never know enough. You never have enough of him. You keep growing in that relationship with him. I don't know how God does it, but when his hand is on you, nothing can stop you. Not even your own screw-ups. Anybody ever blown it and still God blessed you? Come on, let me just encourage the pastor today. Right? How many of you ever, you literally said, man, I shouldn't have done that, and yet God in his grace and mercy still blessed you, still overwhelmed you? Because it ain't about you, it is all about him. God's favor is for you as you get closer to him. But here's the reality, the closer you get to him does not mean the more perfect you become. If that was the case, we'd start thinking we don't need him. See, the closer I get to God, you know what I realize? the less perfect I really am. Because I don't compare myself to someone else. I compare myself to him. And you know what I realize? I've got a long way to go. Can I get a witness, somebody in the house? 
Like, I've got a long way to go. We all do. But here's the beauty of God. His favor on your life is always growing. So God could take you from nowhere to somewhere in just a moment's time. T.D. Jakes said this about God's favor. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I don't understand it. But I've got it. That sounded too white, so let me try. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. I don't understand it. But I got it. Worst T.D. Jakes impersonation ever. You've got it, but it can always keep growing. Samuel, he's a miracle child. His mother, Hannah, could not have children until she prayed. There's a lesson in there. So she named her son Samuel, which means God has heard. Listen to the description of this young man, Samuel. The boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with the Lord and with people. You know what that tells us? I mean, just focus on those three words, grew in favor. That means favor can grow. I also don't think it shouldn't just be can grow, it should grow. That as you are pursuing God, his favor on your life is growing. I've heard people say, that person has that because they have a better connection to God. You know what? That's true. A lot of times God's favor releases abundance and blessing. You know what the difference is? They're not more connected to him. They're just pressing into him. They're leaning in and saying, okay, God, I need you to speak to me because I know my proximity to you releases the promises from you. So I'm just going to lean in. Church, lean in today. Lean in because his favor on you is still has the capacity to grow. Oh, but I've been blessed. God could still bless you even more. Uh, Just me. Okay. All right. I want to be blessed more than I am right now because I want to be a bigger blessing to those around me. The more blessed you are, the more you can do, church. That's why the enemy has tried to restrict us financially because if he can rob your finances, the work of the kingdom cannot grow. He needs your resources. God God wants to bless your resources so that we as a whole could be a blessing to the world. Hear me today. God wants to overwhelm you with his favor, but that requires you getting closer than you've been. How many of you want to grow in favor? Like, honestly, think about that. How many of you want to grow in favor? You want to see that increase in your life. You want to see those radical changes or adjustments. You want to see joy, peace, strength, wisdom, health, potential, and purpose. God's favor is already on you. I mean, does that not wreck you a little bit? If you're a child of the Most High God, you've already got his favor. But I just don't want that much. I want to get under the spout where God's glory is coming out. I want to get in that position. I want to position my life, and I want to lean in. Because the more I lean into him, the more I'm positioning myself for even more favor to grow. And lastly, God's favor can do what you cannot do. Oh, man, I think sometimes we give ourselves way too much credit. It's true, isn't it? I did this. It was this. I, I worked hard. Listen, when God's favor is on your life, you may not be the hardest worker, but God finds a way to bless you anyway. Have you ever met? I've met Christians that are lazy, but they press into Jesus, and they're more blessed than the hardworking person that isn't leaning into Jesus. I know. Some of you just got like wrecked. You're like, dang it. I've been working hard. That's the beauty of God's favor. It isn't necessarily on you. It's on your closeness to him. And the closer you get to him, the more God can release favor in your life. Nehemiah, he's called to rebuild the wall around the city of Jerusalem. He goes to the king and asks permission. The king gives him permission, but the king does even more. He not only gives him permission, he says, I'm going to provide all the resources you need. That's favor. 
I mean, he's literally saying, I just want you're okay to do this. And he literally ends up saying, I'm not just going to give you permission. I'm going to give you everything you need, the equipment, the people, the tools. You'll have it all. Nehemiah finished rebuilding the wall in 52 days. He was able to rally around him strong, young, skilled workers, and he accomplished in two months what scholars say should have taken two years. That's favor. Somehow God sped things up. What's the point? Here, God's favor can do what you cannot do. You may not be qualified for that job, but God's favor can make your resume shine. In fact, I think God could lose other resumes in the mail. Why not? You may not be as attractive as the person you're interested in, but God can make them blind. It is okay. I'm living proof. No, but seriously, he can make you attractive to them. Some of you just got a little dose of hope right there. It's all right. You may not have the ability to turn around your doctor's report, but God could send in one moment a word and heal your body. See, church, God's favor can do what you cannot do. And here's the great thing about God's favor. I love this verse, Psalm 30, verse 5. His favor lasts a lifetime. I think some of us think we go in and out of God's favor based on just what we do. It's not about what you do. And yes, there are consequences to our actions. Don't get me wrong. It is about your proximity to God. I've met many people close to God and still blow it. I've met many people that are still always trying to lean into God. They're trying to lean in and press into him, but they still make mistakes. Talking to the right church today? I mean, we're all like that, right? We want more of God, but yet we still blow it. And yet his favor lasts a lifetime. This blows my mind. That we don't deserve what we have. But God has a promise that his favor is going to last your entire life. How much of God's favor do you want? It's revealed in how much you press in to your God. How much you lean in to him. God's favor is on you. Look at somebody say, God's favor is on me. Come on, like you're really proud. God's favor is on me. Like I'm the favorite. Come on, say it like I'm the favorite. God's favor is on me. God's favor's on you. See, you can feel behind in life, but God's favor can push you ahead. You can feel discouraged, but God's favor can lift you up. You may feel lost, but God's favor will find you where you are and take you further faster than you could ever imagine in your wildest dreams. See, never in my dreams that I ever would, have, would I have ever believed that God would use me the way he is, but he is. It ain't Todd, it's all God. It ain't me, it's his favor, because all I'm trying to do is press in. I just want to lean in. That's not restricted just for the staff. It's open to all of us. There's we as a church. Imagine what ha would happen if Church Unleashed Coma and Hicksville really grabbed this truth and said, I am going to lean into God. I'm going to press into him. I'm going to get as close as I can get to Jesus. Imagine what would happen, church. There would be so much abundance, increase, favor, and blessing on this house that we could change a region. But it comes down to us. It's not just for a few to do it. It's for all of us to do it. All of us as a church. So I'm acting today as Jacob. And I'm asking you, church, be your own Joseph and bring what you have, your Ephraim and your Manasseh, and you come in close today. Come in close to him today because your proximity to God releases the promises of God. God's favor is but one moment away. God's favor on your life can grow, and God's favor can do what you 
cannot do yourself. And that is why, church, you must get close. You've got to lean in to him. All throughout scripture, you'll find that tons and tons of people gathered in the New Testament at the feet of Jesus. They got close. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, sat at the feet of Jesus and she just listened to him teach. The Bible also says that when Jesus arrived after Lazarus' death, she fell at the feet of Jesus. She had this closeness, this intimacy level with Jesus that made her so comfortable that whether he was teaching or preaching, she could get close, or whether she was feeling pain or anger, she could get close. Track it with me? I think some of us think, when it's good, I can get close, but when I'm in pain, I disconnect. No, that's when you got to press in even more. That's when you got to push in even more. Jairus falls at the feet of Jesus and begs Jesus, come save my daughter because she's dying. When they're talking, Jairus receives a word that his daughter had finally died. Jesus goes to the house and says, child, wake up. And Jairus' daughter does. But it was precipitated by a man running to the feet of Jesus, say, Jesus, I need you. And he fell at Jesus' feet. Ten lepers healed of leprosy. Only one comes back to give Jesus thanks. How did he do it? The Bible says he fell to the ground and worshiped Jesus. It's about your proximity and your position. Church, let me ask you. If all we're doing is walking around like this through life, head down, hands in our pocket, Oh, shucks. No, I'm running to Jesus, finding where he is. And when I get close, I'm just, Jesus, I want to I wanna be close to you. Are you going to be the nine lepers that went on their journey after God blessed them? Or are you going to be the one leper that comes back and says, thank you for what you've done in my life. So I always want to be that one that comes back falls at the feet of Jesus and recognizes it wasn't me. It was him. Mary takes expensive oil and finds herself at the feet of Jesus. She anoints him with oil. The disciples then criticize her for wasting money, but Jesus says, leave her alone. She's preparing me for my death. Everyone else is criticizing her for being near Jesus' feet, friend. Let me tell you, the critics will rise the closer you get to Jesus. There'll be people that you thought were with you that get against you because you are hearing, living, and breathing your life for Jesus. His feet. John, he's stranded on the Isle of Patmos. He's writing the book of Revelation. He says this, when I saw Jesus, I fell at his feet as though I were dead. When's the last time you had such a supernatural encounter with Jesus that when you got close, you're like, oh my goodness, God is in this place. When's the last time you were so moved that you said, I've got to get close. I've got to push closer. I've got to pursue him more. I need my proximity to God to be right there. When is the last time, church, that it wasn't just a goosebump that moved you? It was the Holy Ghost moving on your heart and life. When's the last time? For some of you, you may never have had it. For others, you may have lost it. The Bible says this. We started with this verse today, come close to God. And God will come close to you. Come close to God. And God will come close to you. Church, I just want to ask you a simple question. How close do you want to get to Jesus today? How close do you want to get? Do you want to move at least a step in his direction? And when you do, are you so willing to fall at his feet and say, Jesus, it has always only been you. Because until you set your heart right, and your motive's right for your pursuit of Jesus, you will never get the blessings of Jesus. 
comes down to that pursuit and that passion.